so uh, she is teaching and continuing her scholarship and her study, uh, theological studies, and is, again, very passionate about this. So without further ado, yes. Dr. Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I started with you saying namaste for me, Mia. <laughs> so as you can see, my book is entitled as Christian Missions and Conversion, a Historical, Sociological, Anthropological Study. So this is a historical exploration between 100 years. So I had the honor to present this book at the altar, our altar, so it's so privileged. I'm so privileged to do that. So about this book, I, I am a born uh, Episcopalian and I live mm -hmm. in the Church of England, which is called the Church of South India in India. <coughs> the largest denomination in India, founded by the colonial uh, government itself, uh, Church Missionary Society. <coughs> so this book is, uh, is a historical narration of the evangelical work that was done by the missionaries. So many missionary societies, but I could cover only six, which are very, very vast. If you could see the geographical location of the book, where this is all vast India before it was undivided India. So this was the part of the portion Madras presidency I have taken up because I come from there. And I have explored education, healthcare, uh, social upliftment, culture change, humanitarian care, etc. Uh, from two castes. Okay, India, Indian political system is divided into caste system, layers of the caste system. So who the missionaries reached and who the missionaries really worked for. And these two people, the missionaries as well as the converts, found themselves easily accessible to each other in those days. So it was uh, the work, Christianity, Christ's message for the oppressed, and the noble and selfless work of the Christian missionaries. It is very rare presentation, but I try to cut short it. Uh, Christianity in India is uh, as old as first century itself with the disciple of Jesus coming to India. But it was not considered that much. Uh, few Christians in the Malabaric coast, in the Kerala coast, were there since first century. When Thomas, St. Thomas, through Kashmir, went to the down south of India, and there still you can see Thomas Christians. <coughs> and you can see a couple of uh, Jesuits since the arrival of uh, Vasco da Gama in India, 1498, and a uh, couple of things. Even to the Mughals, even to the Mughals uh, court, some of the English people went as uh, tradesmen, but not as religious men. But the serious stuff started in 1610. In 1607, I was teaching U.S. history a couple of years ago. In 1607, uh, American, sorry, English settlers came to Jamestown. And if you can see the year here, 1610, even the Church of England came to India. In the name of James Rind, Thomas Friday, and Patrick Copeland. But uh, at that time, the Aurangzeb was in the power. <clears throat> and you can see some of the German missionaries, Pertula Music in Bach, Henry Klutzschow, and Benjamin Schulz. These are the very old missionary names, if you could recognize them. Very, very old. So they were landed in India, they were German Lutherans. Afterwards, William Carey was there, Joshua Marshman was there, William Ward. You, they were called as the primary. But later, from 1804 onwards, the serious missionary stuff started in the form of London Missionary Society. Godavari Delta Mission, but this Godavari Delta Mission is Brethren Mission. It was, um, did not start in a right way, it had very ups and downs, but still it, it, it has an earliest beginning. <coughs> and then the American Baptist Mission, 1840s, but the real stuff started from 1860s, but I was giving the earliest starting date. The Church Missionary Society of England is the serious stuff, 1841. And American Evangelical Lutheran Mission, 1842, and Canadian Baptist Mission, 1874. These six missionary societies I covered. I want to draw your attention to the missionary preaching methods, because that's very important to know how the missionaries uh, went on their way to preach. 
So I'm not reading everything. Uh, they first of all they preached in the crowds in the bazaars. They were standing in the bazaar like a preacher like me, and then they were preaching. But that did not give much fruit for a long time. They did not even get one convert, let alone many crowds. So they started doing biblical literature. And then the training of Bible men and women, and also vast educational network, and economically self-sufficient <coughs> programs they were doing. And they were teaching new norms and styles of life also. And they had Christianization of rights, rules and practices. And uh, the whole result was the material upliftment of the people, particularly the marginalized society people. If you can see 100 years of growth, I would leave some time to ponder upon the numbers. 100 years of growth of Christianity in India. You can see the increase in the percentage and decrease in the percentage here. You can see between 1911 1901, 1911, 1921, there is a large growth when compared to the other areas. So this is a hundred years of group mobility movements. What are the factors that led to Christian conversion? Christianity became an answer to various social, economic, religious and spiritual problems existing in that society. What is the other problem? Passion for Christianity. So the quotation here is, they came within hearing of the gospel that they quickly and sometimes immediately find in it the satisfaction of their highest desires and finally that they become leaders of their own race. After conversion they became their leaders of their own race in leading all the people in the form of mass movements. Uh, I have discussed a big chapter in that so that's not the, uh, that takes a lot of time to discuss. So the missionaries also carried humanitarian relief works during natural calamities and also colonial agrarian policy and dislocation of the village economy was one of the reason. And the depressed caste sought liberation from caste-based structural oppression. Since many centuries they did not change the occupations that they were holding. They were agricultural laborers, they were leather workers, they did not change it. So Christian conversion made them to change their occupations in the form of service industry, in the form of um, preaching, in the form of teaching, other things. And they sought social upliftment and alternative social identity. <coughs> this is all combined with the evangelistic zeal of the missionaries. They had firm faith in God, had deep devotion to duty, and had the courage to travel to new and strange lands. They worked with people whose language, mode of life and customs were very different. Any questions so far? So, let us see the developmental aspects. Education is one of the main chapters that I have covered. It's the vast network of education, boys schools, girls schools, boarding schools, technical schools, agricultural training institutes, trade schools, theological schools and teacher training schools. It is not only for the converts, it is also for the non-converts too. And then they did not make any <coughs> distinction, but whoever came to the Christian missionaries, they all got benefited, they and their families. And they liked the language and the, uh, sorry, the religion and the message of the Christ, that Christ came for the poor, Christ came to redeem the world. So since many centuries, Indian depressed castes were looking for uh, uh, to bring themselves from oppression. They tried to convert into Islam during the Middle Ages. They tried to do other stuff like um, whatever faith available. You may not know the names, but they tried to follow many spiritual practices. But none of them did not satisfy them like Christianity. The, the time came during the middle of the 19th century for this. As I can say, the, the true cure of darkness is the introduction of light. So light was introduced into the lives of these depressed castes. 